What's up, what's up, and welcome to another episode Master Modes Film Session. And today we're going to be talking about Miles Jack, the new acquired inside linebacker who I am extremely excited about. So, how we, uh, excuse me, as we always do, I'm going to circle him and then after that we'll play it in full speed. Then we're going to break it down. But if you have not, make sure you like the video. Also, if you're not just yet, make sure you subscribe to the channel as well. I don't want you to miss out on any of this content. But as we always do, that's Mr. Miles Jack right there. Circle, arrow, another arrow, another arrow, and I'll even give him another arrow. You know why? Because I love linebackers. So here we go, baby. Oh yeah, gotta love that, right? Gots to love that. We talking about a linebacker getting downhill? Oh baby. Well, here we go. Let's talk about this play. So, starting it out, man, Um, for the uh, Jacksonville Jaguars right here, they're in their sub package ball. So you see you got your four down D linemen. All right, one, two, three, four. This is just your nickel corner right there. So essentially, if this was our defense, if Cam Sutton was our slot corner, that would be Cam Sutton. A year ago, that was Arthur Mollette, all right? We obviously said Miles Jack is right here on the uh, at the inside. A gap lined up in a linebacker position. But um, as we talk about this play, right? <clears throat> Couple things we know. So as I said, it's a two by two set, meaning so guy here and it's another receiver out here. It's two receivers, all right, out this way. So solo back. Now, for context purposes, if 83, this tight end right here, if he was on the line of a scrimmage, if he was on the line of scrimmage, you would treat this one back, one gap. So essentially, Miles would just line up in that gap. He could run right through it. This backside backer would have that B gap. He'll have that uh, that outside gap right there in terms of the C, it's A, boom. And then depending on how these two guys would play it, one would be out here, one would have the late fill. That's if 83 was on the line of scrimmage. As we can see in this clip though, he's off the line of scrimmage. So it changes for Miles. Miles now has to understand that, hey, he has the potential to rock back. And what do I mean by that? I mean, if 83, which he's gonna do as I play this play right here, if 83 comes back, okay, like how he's doing in this clip, Miles can no longer just run through that front side eight gap. All right, because this guy 83 carries two gaps now, okay? If he stays front side, you're in that A, but if 83 rocks back, all right, Miles has to come back with 83 right here, okay? So let's see what Miles does, all right? So on the motion, okay, you're getting flow, fast flow, right? So they're trying to influence Miles, they're trying to influence this backside backer and everybody to go to their right, or excuse me, go to the Colts right. But Miles, very patient. He sees 83 starting to rock back. So instead of chasing and being fast to the front side, even though this would be a three by one, right? Because as we said, you got one right here. 83 is one, this receiver is two, and then this guy out here makes three. So if this was a traditional three by one set pre-snap, well then yes, Miles, you would cheat over. This backside backer would cheat over. But because they're doing it on the fly, you don't rush it, all right? You gotta stay patient, which Miles does right here. So as we continue to play this play, we see 83 continue to go backwards, right? So he carries the extra gap. Well, we wanna make sure they don't have the numbers. That's why Miles has to be patient and stay backside. But by him staying backside and fitting this up, now the Jaguars have numbers right here. Now you have Miles, okay? You got this backside guy, you got this, thir uh, uh, you got the backside DN, which is this guy right here, and then you have the backside LB, all right? So you got three on two, because it's one, two coast defenders, ball carrier. Miles, no, I need to fit inside of this tight end right here, because I got an extra guy out here. I don't need to be outside because I'm cutting off my help. So he stays inside right here. He knows his DN is going to take on this guy, whether he's hammering it or spilling it. Who knows their technique that they're teaching. But you know this is your free hitter right here, okay? So Miles, understanding all those things, stays inside of 83, gets skinny, and now this is super athletic right here. Puts a foot in the ground, shoulders north and south, makes a heck of a tackle. It's 2-8. That is a dog, a boy dog might I add you when you're talking about that running back position, he could definitely get it done at a high level. But this is just high football IQ and athletic ability on display right here by Miles. Not falling for the influence, rocking back with 8-3, knowing where you need to get to, and then just being an athlete making a play. Cause one thing to show up in the hole, that's one thing. Yes, he would have done his job, check, cool. 
but it's the difference between doing your job and being a playmaker. Miles right here is a playmaker, and that's what I love, and that's why the Steelers went and acquired him when they did in free agency, and why he was a, a top draft pick when he came out. This guy creates plays. He plays around the line of scrimmage. I think he does that naturally, and I think that he's just a good downhill LB, man, and this is what you want to see, man. Good quality tackle. Nice little roll at the end. Even if you get one leg, you start rolling, I promise you, that ball carry go down. It'll go down, all right? But it's a really good play, though, right here by Miles, man. Let's say you see A3 carrying that extra gap when he rocks back. So you got to make sure you rock back with him. Stay inside, though. Don't cut off your help. Boom. Excellent job right here by Miles, man. Excellent job. All right, now this next play from Miles, we're gonna get a chance to see him in coverage. Now, when he was in Jacksonville, they didn't ask him to do a ton of man-to-man, -man, um, just based on the context of their defense. They were more of a uh, zone drop, uh, Tampa two, he was always the middle runner typically, or they would have him in the blitz. But a couple of his fire zones, uh, it, it carry over to what we like to do here in Pittsburgh, and it'll be just a little bit of a, introduction to some of the cover stuff that we're going to have him doing a, a lot more of just based on the structure of our defense so with that being said man let's do this thing right that's miles right there circled up with the high white socks gotta love it we'll play this in full speed now that we're gonna break it down all righty all righty so, <clears throat> a couple things going on with this play, man. First off, we started off, um, for the Jaguars on defense, they're in a fire zone coverage, all right? They're just running a uh, strong fire zone. So, essentially, uh, this guy's going, that guy's blitzing here, here. Um, he's got the contain. This guy's going to stump. He's dropping in coverage. Miles is going to be on three. This guy should be on one. See, and then, uh, oh, safety's right here. Yep, there we go. That guy should be on two, so forth and so forth. All right. So, backside safe or backside corner who has the deep fire zone one, uh, fire zone one third, middle field safety is gonna have middle fire zone one third, and then this guy right here technically should have this fire zone one third on the back end. All right. But a couple things here, man. What do we see about this offensive formation? First off, we know it's empty, right? Nobody back here with uh with Carson Wentz. Okay, so it's empty formation, but we got how many guys over here? We got, let's count them up. One, two, three, and four. So we got a quad set right here, four by one. All right, this should tighten on the backside. So with that being the case, we know that, hey, from a coverage perspective, everybody's going to have to push over an extra man. All right, because instead of this guy being back here, he's to the front side. So if you typically would be, you know, on the point of however they were uh, communicating this, now you're going to have to just bump out another guy. You know, you're going to have to bump out another guy. Uh, Miles right here, he's going to bump out another guy. And then this backside guy, it's no action over here for you, okay? Because this tight end, this uh, backside corner is going to have eyes on him. This guy right here, clear that up, we got a lot of lines out here, right? But this guy right here, he should have eyes on number two, okay? And number two is going to be coming from this front side, all right? So that's how it should work. Good job by the Colts here, man. Just giving them something different on the empty. Uh, anytime you get these empty sets, man, you know teams are going to either check to a cover three, maybe they'll go man, or you're going to get the guys that like to blitz it, all right? So right here, we said Jacksonville, they chose the blitz. Okay, so let's see what happens. Four strong, we get blown coverage right out the gate, all right? Corner right here, he squeezes. This guy's punching, but he's supposed to be blitzing, all right? So this is what we're looking like. <laughs> You don't want blown coverages, all right? Just coaching it up. This guy, he should have won. He shouldn't be worried about getting hands on him. This corner right here, he should probably be staying out here because you got this safety right here. Miles is good. This backside guy needs to have eyes back here, okay? So just throwing in terms of how this big picture should look. Instead, though, like I said, we get a little bit of a blown coverage here. But going back to Miles, all right? Because that's what we focused on right here. I'm over here giving you that DC talk. That's how the coordinators talk, right? Hey, coach, correct me on my mistake. Don't teach me the whole picture. But I'm a guy that likes to teach big picture, all right? Because if you understand the big picture, then you'll understand what Miles is supposed to be doing and what the group is as well. So for Miles, once again, circle him right here, okay? There he is. He's going to be looking at number three, okay? Number three in this situation turns out to be the tight end, uh, Jake Doyle, all right? Good tight end, too. This guy right here. All right. So what we know right now with this matchup is Miles has inside leverage, okay? And that's just based on this alignment right here. Staying square, good space, all right? 
eyes on his work too because with this being a fire zone coverage it essentially is going to turn into a man-to-man -man. he's going to have that guy locked up so that's why he has eyes on the uh on the tight end instead of eyes on the quarterback okay so miles has to absorb the contact because we know in today's nfl tight ends receivers they want to create contact at the break point all right so that's what he's getting right now he gets a little subtle shove off all right and technically right now he's open right in terms of nfl this is open you put that ball front side Miles, you're going to have to tackle the catch. Good thing the rush made Wentz hold the ball for a little bit. But this is what I like about this play. All right. It's okay to have some separation while you're in coverage. It happens. Nobody's going to be like a robot and everybody's just, uh, Siamese twinning it. And I got these guys locked in. Nah, it's going to have some times where you're going to have some separation. What do you do after that? Are you okay with the separation? Are you just going to say, you know what, man? He created contact at the break point. Chalk it up. Go to the next play. No, not Miles. What does he do? Watch him finish. Watch this dude open it up. He sprints like a son of a gun to get in that throwing lane and ultimately force the bad pe uh, the bad pass. Based on the camera angle, it's hard to tell if he gets a hand on it or not. But I can definitely assure you that he influenced that play right there and ultimately caused that incompletion, which was great by him. Because, like I said, man, this isn't easy. Jake Doyle, it's not a, uh, easy. Or Jack Doyle, he's not an easy guy to cover, man. But absorbs the contact. Then from there, gets on his horse, spreading through. Hey, all right, you know you got to go get there. Get in that window somehow, some way. Now, if we're going to coach up the finish, because I love the effort. Love the effort. The effort was beautiful in terms of him eating up that grass, getting back in here. When I play that full speed again at the end, we really can see that speed of him closing that space. But right here, we've seen he's gotten to that hip, right? This is my only critique. I love the fact that once he's close enough to touch him, he decides to look back. That's fine. I like the fact that he feels like, hey, you know what? I'm going to be aggressive and go for the ball as well. My only issue is he reaches with this backside hand, this hand on this side, instead of the hand on this side. And why is that important? By him reaching with the backhand, if he does not make this play and Doe catches this, play, uh, this pass, he's out of position. There's nothing he can do. If he catches this and runs up, he's going to be in a trail. Solely because he reached with the backhand instead of reaching with this hand. If he reaches with this hand, okay, where the arrow is pointed at, even if he misses, this off hand is in position to make the tackle. By him reaching with that inside hand right here, it puts him out of position unless he makes it. Now, right here on this play, he was right because what we said, right? Force the bad pass. He's able to, you know, uh, ultimately, whether he gets his hand on it or not, I couldn't tell based on the angle, but either way, he gets in that window and makes sure it's incomplete. But for coaching for, for coaching coaching purposes all right all my young linebackers out there do not reach with that backside hand unless you are going to make that play otherwise that guy is catching that and he is going to have plenty of time to turn up and run all right but good play right here and here we can see that speed i was talking about so you see the separation right here right on the subtle push off but now you got the separation all right what does miles do watch him go rolling rolling but definitely like that play by him as a whole. And like I said, here in Pittsburgh, he's going to be asked to do a lot more of that. But it's good to see that he at least can get the job done. And we know he's going to compete, which is my biggest thing. Just compete, baby. All right. Now, this final play, we're going to break down for Miles. I just like it because it just shows attitude. It shows physicality. It shows fundamentals. But it shows that want to. When you talk about stopping the run, it's about a mentality. You just have to wake up and say, you know what, man, I'm smashing this run. Sometimes it's less about X and O's and more about who got the bigger dog in the fight. And to me, man, this play exemplifies that. And this is something that I cannot wait to see Miles bring to this Pittsburgh Steelers defense, man, because we've been missing it. But he's that answer. So as you see, I circled him right there. We'll play this play in full speed. And after that, we're going to break it down. Alrighty, alrighty. Now, you talk about why I like this play. Well, first off, all right, we know it's running game time, right? San Francisco 49ers, just from my identity standpoint, we know they like to run the ball, right? And when they throw us off a play action pass, so you're always going to be downhill in reacting to the pass. That's just the way you got to play the Niners. If you're soft against that run, they will eat you up with it, all right? So, 
Miles understanding that. You see right here, they're in their base front 3-4 look, right? One, two, three down D lineman. You got your two outside guys, Miles and 54 on the inside. Miles lined up in his gap because right now, as we talked about in that last tape, right? The last clip, is it one back, one gap? Well, you can make a case for it being that, but him slightly offset and him looking this direction is telling me something. That's information. When you talk about pre-snap, keys, tips, that's what you're looking for. Okay. You look at this tight end. Do you think this guy's going back? You think this guy's going off for a pass? Or do you think this guy's about to block 41? Where's his eyes at? Inside. So that's telling you information. When I look at this tight end right here, where's his eyes? They're going across. Hey, I don't think he's worried about 4 or 5 right now or this guy right here. This is telling me something, all right? So you know that pre-snap. So now let's keep the play going. All right, so we get a little motion. Now, the play did cut off in terms of the beginning of it. This tight end was in the backfield. It was a shift. He lines up right here. So that was also information. And this guy stepped back off the ball. Just giving you context, all right? The film cut off, so we didn't get a chance to see that. But... Now we're getting motion, all right? So, Miles is getting ready to cheat over, and he's talking too, right? He's letting guys know it's communication right here, which is what you want, okay? So, with that, because he knows now, they're trying to have formation into the boundaries. Another guy out here wide, okay? So, they're creating that three-by-one look. So, that's why 5-4 cheats over, 4-4 four, four cheats over, because they know this guy is teaching. He's telling you something, all right? He's taking you to where the action is. You also know you got numbers on this backside. If they try to run this ball over here, how are they going to block this up? You got one and two. Because remember, he's gone. So you got one and two versus one, two, three, four. It's not the numbers. Numbers wise, that's telling you information as well, okay? Because this guy is not going to be able to cut 45 off. So you know schematically, when you see this guy going in motion like that, that's telling you even more information, all right? It's there for you. All you got to do is look for it, all right? So with that being the case, though, Miles gets in position. Now, he sees this. All right, you got backside pull. You got that tight end that was just in motion coming over. So he knows, all right, this play can hit either inside this tight end. All right, let me draw it up. This play can either hit in here or it can hit out here. But Miles knows he has to be able to fit up on this guy right here. All right. So how's he play it? Shuffle stays square. But now he sees, okay, it's going to hit on the outside. Let's get physical, baby. Enough of the small talk. I don't want it. I don't care about how you're taking this on. Oh, you got to have an inside shoulder. You got to have an outside shoulder. Nah, give me attitude. Condense the hole. It's no hole right here. Where is he running this ball? This guy's not. I don't. I know 54 did a great job in terms of being inside on the ball. Good job by him. But 4-4 makes this play. He makes this play even though he doesn't make the play. He makes the play because he folds up this tight end right here. Stout at the point of attack. Ultimately causing this guy to get caught up in the action. And then from there, just drive him to the ground. Finish it off. Get nasty with him. Let him know. Let him know. It's an attitude play. And you see the big boy walk. That's when you know you made the play. That's when you know you did your job. That's beautiful right there, though, by, uh, by Miles Jack, though, man. Let's get back to that action real quick, man. I said, good job, though, by him, man. Pre-snap, he sees the motion. All right. Knows it's time to cheat over. Ball can't come back. We got four or five just sitting here. Free hitter. Okay, this guy right here, I'll circle him so you can see him. It's the free hitter. This ball cannot come back over there. They have no answer for him. And this guy already has the edge set too. So once again, zero telling you to go backside. Okay. But as we continue it on, 5-4. Patient inside on the back. Good play by him. You got 4-4 four, four right here. 20 inside this blocker. Good job. All right. But Miles, he has to know. All right. If I'm forcing this, because if this ball hits outside, I got to be the force, send it back to 5-4. All right. If that ball hits inside, I got to condense the heck out of it and make sure that 5-4 is available to make that play. But you don't want to make it a lot of space. But like I said, man, just excellent job. You see that. Low man wins. Inside hands. Hits on the rise. Let's rewind that back. Low man wins, right? He had the knee bend. Inside hands. Head up also. Definitely like that. But then from here, extension. Come on, man. This is coaching tape. This is coaching. Th this is extension. This is, listen, Junior. This is, I know it was Father's Day. I'm your dad. This is, look, I am your father. That's what that is right there, man. And I love to see that. I do. Beautiful job, though, man. Folding them up. Finish it. That's an attitude play. That's what you want from the leader of your defense. And that's ultimately what he will be bringing to the Pittsburgh Steelers. So, 
appreciate y'all for checking it out, man. Let me know your thoughts on Miles Jack, though, man. Some of the things that he's bringing to the table that you may be excited about, you know, and how you think that, you know, his impact will be felt. But either way, I appreciate you for tuning in. And until next time, baby, peace.